One of the most important topics nowadays inside automotive is the idea of the car which can drive on its own. But how is this possible? The most important part is the so-called ADAS, Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. These systems you find everywhere at the front or at the back of the car. For example, as here at this Audi Q5, where you see it in the front bumper. The radar system, for example. Beside the radar system, we can also use a leader system, LiDAR system, or even the front camera, which you will find in the front mirror. Everything together makes the car smart and makes it more and more able to drive on its own. So here we are inside the classroom now. Let's see what kind of training systems Lukas Nulle has developed for the topic Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. We start directly with the Rear View Assistance. It consists out of a camera and a PDC control. That means this system shows how to park reverse. Right beside it we see another training system. This is the Traffic Sign Recognition System. It consists again out of a camera and different traffic signs. The camera is able to read the traffic sign and make use of it. Furthermore, we are right now developing another training system for ACC, which means Adaptive Cruise Control. Furthermore, we have a very modern training system, which you see over here, the so-called LiDAR system. But today, we make use of another training system. This is a training system for gesture control, and it show, shows how to make use of a modern car. We are talking here of the HMI, the Human Machine Interface. This system shows how the driver interacts with the car. Now let's have a look at the training system which shows a modern HMI within the vehicle. HMI stands for Human Machine Interface and this is exactly what this training system is showing to us. How does the driver control the car? Let's have a look, a detailed look, at this training system over here. What we see here is a mixture of different components which are part of this modern HMI. On the one hand, we have our gesture area. So what does it mean? Here we can go through different gestures from right to left or from left to right. We can control, for example, the ventilation level. We can increase it or we can decrease it. Furthermore, we have further touch zones over here. So that means switches and similar things are things of the past. Nowadays, we are using sensitive touch areas. For what example we can use that? For example, for the seat heating. So we just do a touch on the surface and we see how the seat heating is activated. Same works for the air conditioning. One touch on the sensitive area and the air conditioning system is activated. Beside these touch areas, we have also more complex areas. Here, for example, we have a touch area where we can adjust the volume of the signal. When we start here, we slightly hear how the volume is increasing or decreasing. Nevertheless, it's not only about the touch and to feel how it works, it's also about to do measurements on the system. And this is also possible. If you have a look at the system again, you see that we have everywhere different 2 mm test points where we can connect the Unitrain interface to and do different measurements on. One example is the ambient light. So the ambient light is connected with the interface and on the screen, out from our e-learning software, we are using our oscilloscope. So what do we see now on the board? If we touch this area here and move it in a circle, we see how the light or the power of the light will increase or decrease. But what does it mean? from a perspective of the oscilloscope, so from a measurement, how does the signal looks like? So this is what we see here. We start at zero and we see very thin spikes. Now the PWM is increasing or it's getting broader while we are turning up the light. And 
finally we got the maximum value of the PWM and that equals the brightest level of the light. Once you have run through the different experiments, you have understood how the gesture control and all the other touch interfaces are working. The next thing, which is absolutely important for the workshop, is the diagnostic on that. Here we can create different diagnostic compasses through activating the fault simulation. In the module, we have five different faults which can be activated inside the system just by clicking on the certain pages. And then you are even able to fulfill all the diagnostic work on the Unitrain system inside your classroom.